So one of the most important concepts in all of astronomy is the whole idea of parallax. Because after all, most of the objects we're trying to observe and, and learn about are at great, great distances from us. Uh, this is an essential tool to measure all kinds of things, one of which is how far away distant objects are. Now, as an example of how parallax works, first of all, envision your two eyes trying to observe something. Now, your eyes are actually, the pupils of your eyes are separated by a certain distance. And we're going to call that distance in this discussion the baseline. Now, for obviously human eyes, it would be a few inches. But if we want to look at an object somewhere in front of us, let's just picture an object right here. That object is in the foreground of distant objects. And if we were to look at that object with, say, just our left eye, we close our right eye and observe it with our left eye, our sight line, as it was called, would pass straight through the object and to the background behind the object. This is called a sight line. This line that leaves where you're viewing passes through the object to the background beyond. Now, if we were to instead close our left eye and view from our right eye, the sight line would look something like this. Now, what's not important is the object itself, nor which eye we're using. What's important to understand is our background. If this happens to be my house, perhaps there's a bookshelf right here. Maybe there's a potted plant. Perhaps my doggie's curled up in the corner taking a snooze. Well, if I were to look at, say, my finger held at this distance, it was the object, and then I instead focus my left eye on the background beyond it, my sight line would intersect the bookshelf. But of course, when I switch eyes and observe from the right eye of the background, I'd be checking out Fido instead. So what does this different apparent background view mean to us? Well, for one thing, it can help us determine how far away the object is through which our two sight lines passed. And we can do that if we know just two things. First of all, we have to know the length of our baseline. The, literally, the length in the difference of the two views we made of that object and we also need to know what this angle is right here. And it's the same as that angle right there. It's called the parallax angle. And it's this angle and this site or this uh, baseline that allow us to find the distance to the object. And it's calculated in a very interesting manner. Here's how we think of it. If this represents the center of a great big circle, the object, and we draw the radius of that great big circle, not a very good circle, so that the object is at the center of our circle, then what we're really trying to do to find the distance to the object is find the radius of this great big circle. Now, when we're dealing with stars, what we're doing is we're viewing parallax angles from the Earth. And of course, the Earth rotates. And if we were to make one observation of that star when we are on this side of the Earth, and then later on, as the Earth rotated 12 hours, we were to observe the same star from the other side of the Earth, we would get a parallax angle, an apparent motion against the background stars. And we know the baseline length. It's going to be the diameter of the Earth, roughly 13,000 kilometers in diameter. So the question is, then, how can we find the length of the sight line as it approaches the center of this great big circle? Because that would be the distance to our star. Well, it's a simple proportional understanding from mathematics. This little angle is part of the 360 degree angle that is a circle. Just as this little fraction of the circumference is part of the circumference. That's why we can write that 
the parallax angle, and it must be measured in degrees, is to 360 degrees as this little piece of the circumference called the baseline is to the entire circumference, which is always calculated as 2 pi r. So yes, the fraction of the angle as to the whole angle, 360, is proportional to the fraction of the circumference as to the whole circumference. And yes, we know the parallax angle if we measured it for the star. And we know the baseline if we view from opposite sides of the Earth. It's the diameter of the Earth. So we could find r, which effectively is the distance to our object that we're viewing this parallax with. So as an example, if we had a star that we viewed from opposite sides of the Earth and got a two-second uh, to arc second angle of parallax, which is reasonable. Then we could go ahead and make this calculation of distance to that star because we can only use degrees since our denominator has degrees. First, we would convert arc seconds to degrees. And after all, there are 3,600 arc seconds in one degree. Therefore, what we're effectively looking at here is a measurement of 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth degrees. Because two arc seconds are not much of a degree. That's a tiny little angle we're going to see there. And now that we know that, we can complete the equation. There are 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth degrees in this angle, proportional to 360 total degrees of an entire circle, and they must be proportional to the baseline chunk of circumference, 1,300 kilometers in this example, to 2 pi r, with r being the distance to our object. So if we take these numbers and divide this number by that number, multiply by 2, multiply by pi, and then divide the entire mass into 1,300 kilometers, we get a radius of approximately 1.3 times 10 to the 9th kilometers. Yeah, that seems like a long distance, but in terms of spatial separation, it's not that great. So yes, we can always calculate the distance to an object if we know the parallax of the object and the length between the two viewing angles that we created that parallax with by a simple proportion of parallax is to 360 as this length is to the entire length known as circumference. However, that's not the only utility of parallax. We can actually think in other terms, not about knowing baseline and finding distance to an object, but we can use a parallax angle and a baseline to instead, or excuse me, a parallax angle and a distance to an object in order to find the baseline. Now, when would this be useful? Well, what if we were trying to view an object and we knew the distance to that object? In that case, we would know our radius, thinking backwards here. And of course, if we could measure what's called the angular diameter of the object, for instance, from one side of the object to the other, creates two sight lines that converge on where I'm viewing from. And because those two sight lines of opposite sides of the object I'm trying to view converge, they create an angle. And we refer to that angle as the angular diameter of the object. And this is useful when we talk about the angular diameter of the moon or the sun as being so many arc seconds or arc minutes of the angle of the sky, 180 degrees. 
that's exactly what we're doing. We're referring to literally how much of the sky the angle would block out if we spread it out up into our field of vision. So how can we find the diameter, the actual diameter of this object, if we know this angle and we know how far away it is? Well, it's kind of the opposite of what we just did. And in this case, we think of our circle as including the object that we're trying to view, and we are at the center of the circle. So the radius is still the distance between us and the object, but the baseline is no longer different positions from which we view the object. The baseline is the distance from one side of the object to the other, but the principle is the same on how we would calculate this length instead of the length of the distance itself. And this is useful for determining, say, the diameter of a star that is far away. Let's say we have a star that is 1.3 parsecs away from us. And we measure its angular diameter to be quite small, probably, somewhere in the vicinity, let's say, of 0.05 arc seconds. We would like, knowing the distance and knowing the angular diameter, to be able to calculate the diameter of that distant star. Well, it's the same understanding. This angle is a fraction of the 360 degree angle of a circle, and this diameter of the star is a length that's a fraction of the circumference of the circle. So the same understanding is employed. We know that we have an angle that must be expressed, first of all, not in arc seconds, but in degrees. Quick conversion, 0 0.050, oh, excuse me. Let me erase that. It's messy. I don't even need it. And instead, let's just divide this by 3600 to get arc, to get roughly 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth degrees of angular diameter. Well, now we can go ahead and use our equation. If the object has an angular diameter of 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth degrees, that is to 360 degrees as the baseline, which in this example is the width of the object we're trying to view, is to the entire circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. And in this case, we know r. It's 1.3 parsecs. Quick calculation, and we get 3.2 times 10 to the negative seventh parsecs as the width of this distant object. Now, of course, that doesn't really tell us anything unless, of course, we could convert it to something like kilometers or meters, which we can do very simply because one parsec is equivalent to 3.1 times 10 to the 13 kilometers. Parsecs would cancel, and when I perform the calculation, I get 9.8 times 10 to the 6 kilometers, or roughly uh, 90 or 9,800,000 kilometers in diameter. Not unreasonable for a star by any means. In a subsequent video, I will show a third way that this whole concept of parallax is used.